the yellow cat, who may have belonged to the couple that broke up, is dreaming. His paws twitch now and then, and once he makes a small, suppressed remark with his mouth shut. I wonder what cats dream of, and to whom he was speaking just then. Cats seldom waste words. They are quiet beasts. They keep their counsel. They reflect. They reflect all day, and at night their eyes reflect. Overbred Siamese cats may be as noisy as little dogs, and then people say they're talking, but the noise is farther from speech than is the deep silence of the hound or tabby. All this cat can say is meow, but maybe in his silences he will suggest to me what it is that I have lost, what I am grieving for. I have a feeling that he knows. That's why he came here. Cats looking out for number one. It was getting awfully hot. I mean, you could touch less and less. The stove burners, for instance. Now, I know that stove burners always used to get hot. That was their final cause. They existed in order to get hot. But they began to get hot without having been turned on. Electric units or gas rings. There they'd be when you came into the kitchen for breakfast, all four of them glaring away, the air above them shaking like clear jelly with the heat waves. It did no good to turn them off because they weren't on in the first place. Besides, the knobs and dials were also hot, uncomfortable to the touch. Some people tried to cool them off. The favorite technique was to turn them on. It worked sometimes, but you could not count on it. Others investigated the phenomenon, trying to get at the root of it, the cause. They were probably the most frightened ones. But man is most human at his most frightened. In the face of the hot stove burners, they acted with exemplary coolness. They studied. They observed. They were like the fellow in Michelangelo's Last Judgment who has clapped his hands over his face in horror as the devils drag him down to hell. But only over one eye. The other eye is busy looking. It's all he can do, but he does it. He observes. Indeed, one wonders if hell would exist if he did not look at it. However, neither he nor the people I am talking about had enough time left to do much about it. And then finally, of course, there were the people who did not try to do or think anything about it at all. When the water came out of the cold water taps hot one morning, however, even people who had blamed it all on the Democrats began to feel more profound unease. Before long, forks and pencils and wrenches were too hot to handle without gloves, and cars were really terrible. It was like opening the door of an oven going full blast to open the door of your car. And by then, other people almost scorched your fingers off. A kiss was like a branding iron. Your child's hair flowed along your hand like fire. Here, as I said, it is cooler. And as a matter of fact, this animal is cool. A real cool cat. No wonder it's pleasant to pet its fur. Also, he moves slowly, at least for the most part, which is all the slowness one can reasonably expect from a cat. He hasn't that frenetic quality most creatures acquired. All they did was zap and gone. They lacked presence. I suppose birds always tended to be that way, but even the hummingbird used to halt for a second in the very center of its metabolic frenzy and hang, still as a hub, present above the fuchsias, and then gone again. But you knew something was there besides the blurring brightness. But it got to the point that even robins and pigeons, the heavy, impudent birds, were a blur. And as for swallows, they cracked the sound barrier. You knew swallows only by the small, curved sonic booms that looped about the eaves of old houses in the evenings. Worms shot like subway trains through the dirt of gardens, among the writhing roots of the roses. You could scarcely lay a hand on children by then, too fast to catch, too hot to hold. They grew up before your eyes. But then, maybe that's always been true. <laughs>